Oh. Oh, Chat hier. Chat, ich habe ich hab was gefunden. Ich habe was gefunden, was wir uns angucken müssen. Neu, neue Pedale von Lawrence. Okay, ich würde das eigentlich so gerne nachmachen, ne? aber ich möchte Lawrence nicht kopieren. The past few years, my favorite pedals in sim racing have been the Mecca Cup 1 pedals. So I was surprised when they contacted me to tell me that they had a new model called the... Boah, ist schon alleine, also äh, Lawrence, Entschuldigung, dass ich dich jetzt gerade unterbreche, aber schon allein das Gaspedal, diese riesige Fläche, oh, sexy, liebe sowas. Was ist denn da mit der Kupplung los, Alter? Die sieht ja richtig krass aus. Evo One Pedals. They share a lot of the same characteristics as the Cup One Pedals, other than a hydraulic brake offering and a more versatile bass plate. Or so it seemed. I'm Lawrence, welcome to the channel. Lawrence fängt langsam an, einer meiner äh, liebsten Reviewer zu werden. Introduction. On the left you'll see all the sections in this video. I've put timestamp links to each section in the description below. While you're down there, please hit the thumbs up button to help YouTube suggest this video to... Lawrence, warum habe ich dich eigentlich nicht abonniert, Lawrence? Ich hätte das übrigens gerne auch mit Dings hier. Lawrence. Others like you. 70% of the people who watch my videos are not subscribed. Ja, jetzt sind wir's. Please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell if you want to be notified about upcoming reviews. Mecca is one of those outlier brands. A niche product that doesn't get the recognition that it deserves. However, their incredible quality to date has earned them a cult status with a massive group of very happy Cup One owners. Normally, a pedal review is super complex thanks to the elastomers and adjustment in the pedals, namely the brake. I tested both the load cell and hydraulic pedals with many elastomer configurations for this review and the results are somewhat conflicting and it took me a long time to be 100% certain about my conclusions. Also so optisch würde ich sagen, bin ich jetzt ganz ehrlich, eine der schönsten Pedalsets, die es gibt. Also nur optisch. I loved the Mecca Cup 1 pedals, so one of the first things I asked Mecca was why they decided to replace the Cup 1 pedals and the answer was simple. Supply chain issues. They took it as a chance to refine their flagship product. All the products in this review were sent to me free of charge for the purposes of this review, and nobody other than me has had a say in the content of this video. The links to this product and its competitors in the description, maybe affiliate links, and if used, will earn this channel some money at no extra cost to you. First impressions. These Evo One pedals are beautiful. They each come pre-assembled, and you need to build the base plate yourself. Oh ja, ich liebe das, wenn immer diese Sachen mit der Baseplate, yes, die ist richtig schick, nice. Sowas finde ich immer geil. Uh, die sieht richtig schön aus mit Aluprofil und mm, geil, schön. The horizontal profile that the pedal sits on is adjustable forwards and backwards, which is a great idea. However, the heel plate does not adjust forward and backwards, so this is actually less useful than it seems. Despite amazing quality. Ich weiß, wie es ist, ne? Ich muss das eigentlich auch irgendwann mal machen. Aber ich wehre mich dagegen noch so vehement. Ich müsste mein Aluprofil, also ich müsste meine ausmessen. Und dann müsste ich hier unten äh, bei mir, müsste ich so, so eine Querstrebe, zwei Stück reinbauen, dass ich die äh, Baseplate anbauen kann. Weil es gibt einfach mittlerweile viel bessere und angenehmere Konzepte. The stickers on the heel plate and oh, Lawrence, das ist aber nicht handfest, Lawrence. Das sieht mein geschultes Auge der übermäßigen Handfestigkeit. Oh, da hat aber einer ordentlich reingedrillert, Junge. <lacht> Control Box, let the overall look down a bit. This product is screaming for some laser engraving. The three cup system from the Cup One is now a two cup system with a spring to simulate the initial phase of breaking. I'll cover that in more detail later. One thing I really liked about the Cup One pedals was the way the Control Box was presented on an elevated mount. This made the cables line up nicely and really gave it a unique look. The control box for the Evo One pedals is a lot smaller, but the bracket is far less impressive, albeit far easier to hide out of the way. Aber ich finde dafür die neuen Pedale viel schicker. Also ich finde die so wirklich... Also die B-Roll ist einfach... Price. These pedals are available in several configurations. The most affordable is the two-pedal setup, which comes in at $517 before taxes. The base plate is an extra $74 before taxes, but this is a very good combo for that price. If you're in the market for a shifter and handbrake, the bundles are very, very competitive. I also have those for review 
and that review is coming soon. I would like to see a 3 pedal with base plate bundle on here without the shifter and handbrake as I feel that that would be the most popular configuration. Cool, I also yeah. got the extended throttle face plate. This is well worth the tiny price tag and also looks the part. It's a must have in my view. Installation Hardware The main assembly is in the base plate itself which is still relatively straightforward. The pedals require 4 bolts each but as they Okay, das erklärt warum das das erklärt warum die Unterlegscheiben so ausgesehen haben. Bolt into T-slot nuts. They're easy to install from above and adjustment is also very straightforward. The slots for the bolts are huge which gives more forward and back adjustment than most pedals on the market. That's true. Installing the whole assembly on my rig should be quite easy, but the front bolts were a pain. I'm really not a fan of how this heel plate attaches. I'd like to see a welded nut on the inside to make adjustments easier. It has height adjustment but no forward and back adjustment which is disappointing. The main issue I had is that the heel plate obstructs the front mounting holes so installation was far more complex than it needed to be. I'd love to see a better access point for the front mounting slots. All pedals plug into the tiny control box which connects to your PC using USB-C. The control box ports aren't labeled though, which is another oversight that I wouldn't expect at this price point. Even the most budget brands have labels on the ports. Installation. Aber vielleicht ist das egal? Software. Mecha provides software to easily calibrate the pedals and set curves for your pedal inputs. These curves allow you to specify a non-linear relationship between the amount of travel or force on your pedal and the amount of input that registers in game. In other words, you may drive cars that are super sensitive on the throttle when exiting corners and you might want to dedicate the majority of your pedal travel to the first 25% of your throttle input. Once the software is configured, you don't need to run it again. The pedals work great without the software running. During calibration, I did have some little input jumps happening which were easily addressed with a little bit of dead zone. One pedal lost its calibration within minutes, but once recalibrated, it worked fine after that. Mm. Clutch. The clutch setup on these pedals is pretty impressive visually. It simulates a bite point and allows for a small amount of adjustment. Unlike the other two pedals, you cannot alter the starting point of the pedal face. The cantilevered mechanism works great to accurately simulate the feeling of a clutch pedal once disengaged. Das wisst ihr, der Witz ist immer an der ganzen Sache. Im Auto ist das doch das leichteste Pedal, oder? Ich fahre halt so wenig, äh, fahre halt so wenig Klatsch, aber das ist doch super weich. Da kannst du doch mit dem Finger drauf drücken, oder? Also ich bin nicht der Kupplungsfahrer. You get that sense of lightness when not engaged and that sense of slow engagement after the bite point. It's incredibly rewarding to use. It's a shame sims don't properly simulate the bite point, but this clutch is definitely one of the best clutches in sim racing for me. Throttle. I'm a Dann habe ich das falsch in Erinnerung, Chat. Dann habe ich das tatsächlich, äh, das Gas ist noch leichter. Hm. A fan of a nice heavy throttle, which is easy to modulate and this throttle allows... Oh, 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 was ist das hier? Ist Lawrence dagegen gekommen? ...allows that nicely, using a toolless preload adjustment. You have enough adjust... Oh, das finde ich auch nicht gut. Uh, das... Mm, mm. Für, mm. ...to change the starting point of the throttle throw significantly. There's also plenty of adjustment to suit most tastes without the need to swap out springs. Adjusting the preload doesn't affect the pedal travel, oh. which is a separate adjustment. You do need tools for that though, and I've somehow managed to lose one of my bolts. You can tell by the bump stop that these pedals have been enjoyed in anger. I threw everything I had at them and they absolutely lapped it up if you pardon the pun. One major improvement over the Cup 1 pedals is the silence of operation with the Evo 1 pedals. I didn't need to lubricate any of the parts over the several months that I used them. Ja gut, aber so sehen die aber aus. Load cell break. Here's where it gets complex. I'll save my comparison for the final thought, and for now I'll concentrate solely on the load cell pedal and the elastomer stack. At first I wasn't sure about the addition of a spring here, but it does a great job of simulating the initial phase of power assisted braking. You don't need to put too much effort into trail braking, but there's still enough resistance to easily modulate this first little phase. It makes for a very intuitive and enjoyable experience, especially in cars which are more difficult to balance. Das sieht eigentlich sehr interessant aus, das System. Through corners. You can adjust the starting angle of the pedal slightly, but moving it a lot will influence the preload on your pedal. I tried many adjustments with these pedals, but the default was best for me. Adjusting your load cell stack is super simple and tool free. Just be careful not to pinch your fingers on the metal parts. 
If you're not sold on the initial spring feeling, you're out of luck because with the Mecha Evo 1 load cell break, you can't replace the spring with an elastomer. Not easily anyways, as Mecha doesn't supply you with another elastomer cup and the preload adjuster also has a raised edge on it which sits perfectly into the spring but it would ruin an elastomer over time as well as not getting a good feel from that elastomer oh, okay. as you'd get with a flat surface and a cup. I tried it with an elastomer and it just didn't feel right to me. Unfortunately, the elastomers in an elastomer stack need to have a nice balance and the other elastomers are too much harder or softer than the spring to get a balanced feel. So adjustability is possible but the results weren't as good as I expected. Luckily that default really suited me. I was instantly on pace with these pedals and thoroughly enjoyed my time with them. Ultimately though, the default configuration was extremely satisfying for longer stints. Not too heavy, but plenty of feel to nail those braking zones. They've really done a phenomenal job with these and I think they've studied their competitors closely and tested them intensively to gain the upper hand. They've gotten it right yet again with the Evo 1 pedals. Hydraulic Brake This is by far the most realistic hydraulic pedal I've ever used. It feels like a brake in a high-end sports car or supercar. Unfortunately, I don't have much experience with dedicated race cars, so I cannot comment about those, but the amount of feel and travel in this hydraulic brake really sets them apart from others that I've tried. Again, I haven't tried them all, so maybe I'm just easily impressed here. As far as I'm concerned, this is the best hydraulic brake in sim racing. As I mentioned in the previous section, I will not be comparing it to the load cell offering in this section, I'll save that for the end. As well as being probably the most impressive looking brake in sim racing, it features great adjustability, including mm. preload and starting point adjustment, as well as two swappable elastomers. These elastomers are larger than the ones on the load cell brake and also feature the cup system. They're visually stunning and the little bracket that Mecha supplies makes them very easy to fit. Again, you don't need any tools to adjust the elastomer stack here, which is really nice for quick adjustments. They come with the two black elastomers fitted by default and they're the lightest. Some might feel that the brake pedal is slightly slow to return with these elastomers, but even though I'm sensitive to that with other hydraulic pedal sets, it wasn't an issue for me here. Replacing those black elastomers with the heavier blue 80 shore and the orange 90 shore elastomers makes these pedals a far different beast. You get a much stiffer pedal and they feel incredible. Apparently, you can even run this hydraulic pedal set in an inverted configuration. Final thought. Most people have skipped to this section to find out which one I prefer, hey. the load cell or the hydraulic brake. My initial answer is very diplomatic, as in, they're both at the top of their game. Nee, Lawrence, weißt du auch warum nicht? Äh, 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 weil ich ähm, das selber immer sehe, dass Leute immer nur drei Minuten gucken im Durchschnitt und dann Fragen stellen in den Kommentaren, die in dem Video beantwortet wurden. Deswegen gucke ich immer die ganzen Videos und dann stelle ich meine Fragen. Also nein, Lawrence, ich habe bis zum Ende geguckt und ich möchte auch jedem da draußen immer raten, wenn ihr Reviews guckt, guckt sie bitte bis zum Ende. As far as bitte. breaking in sim racing is concerned, they're extremely, extremely good, but also quite different. This is where my diplomacy goes out the window. I prefer the load cell brake, despite the flaws I experienced in the balance of the adjustability. That's probably not the conclusion most of you expect here, but please hear me out. To put it simply, if I wanted to have my friends around and wanted to impress them with how realistic my sim rig is, I'd mount a hydraulic brake. It's sensational and feels like it was lifted straight out of a high performance car. However, if Dara McCormack needed to use my rig for a competitive esports event, I'd put the load cell brake on there. I just found it easier to modulate and although it's not as realistic as the hydraulic brake, it just feels like a better sim racing pedal for me. In an environment where we don't have the seat of our pants to rely on, we need to train our minds and legs to brake as consistently as possible, but with the load cell brake, I didn't have to think about anything. It was all intuitive. It was slightly more difficult with the hydraulic, but even though I went back and forth between them a lot for this review, I didn't notice any difference in pace or consistency between the two. I think it's always Team Hydraulic, right? I think it's Team Hydraulic and Hard Stop. Auch nicht. Irgendwie sollte man das vielleicht irgendwann mal ändern. Vielleicht sollte man das irgendwann mal ändern, ja. Mm. All I can tell you is that I felt more at home with the load cell brake, and that may be simply due to my experience with sim racing pedals. I cannot quantify my reasons, but I've tried my best to explain them. If you don't want to have any doubts, buy the hydraulic brake. 
if you really want that initial brake phase, which is lovely for trail braking, by the load cell. If the load cell pedal's default setup didn't suit me so well, I definitely prefer the hydraulic. There are many very... Das Einzige, was ich jetzt gerade ein bisschen schade finde, ist, dass hier diese Stücke dazwischen sind. Weil das gibt dir nicht die Möglichkeit, deine, äh, deine Pedal, wie sagt man denn dazu, äh, Köpfe, Auflagen, dass man die nicht nach rechts und links verschieben kann. Also das finde ich jetzt nicht so schön. Und vor allen Dingen, wenn du nachher noch Upgrades reinbauen willst, weil manche Leute haben ja äh, an der Seite noch so eine Fußablage, danke, ja, eine Ballenablage. Also wenn die an der Seite machen, sich ja Leute noch so eine Pedale, solche Dings ran hier. Um, dass man mit dem Fuß nicht weggehen kann und ich weiß nicht, ob man das hier noch drunter kriegt. Very satisfying high-end pedal sets out there and all for different reasons. Das würde ich mir übrigens mittlerweile auch wünschen, aber ich habe noch nirgendwo welche gefunden für meine Pedale. Some have a great brake, some have a great throttle, some even have a great base plate. Very few have it all and these pedals pretty much have it all. The issues I found are nitpicks and each of these pedals is a masterpiece in its own right. The electronics aus. box is not as bold as its predecessors, but that's not a bad thing either. I would have liked to see them keep that design as it really sets these pedals apart visually. I think that they ditched that concept because of the sheer size of the Evo 1 brakes. Adjustability is decent, although the heel plate could be a lot easier to adjust. As it stands, it's an awkward installation, an adjustment, so there's no forward or backward movement. A welded nut would make this a far more user-friendly process. Luckily, you can slide the entire piece of profile that the pedals attach to, but I found this to be very stubborn and not practical when they're mounted to the rig. I think that they've improved on the Mecha Cup 1 pedals in many ways. I'd like to see the option for a 3 cup elastomer stack on the load cell brake though. The Evo 1 pedals are definitely less noisy and require less maintenance. The black also hides dirt marbles from rubber soles a lot better. It's my job to be critical of equipment that I review so that consumers can make educated decisions. These pedals are incredible and I cannot imagine anyone not loving them. In fact, they may be the best pedals I've ever used. I'm Lawrence, I stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 9pm UK and Irish time. Thanks again to Mecha Sim Hardware for making this review possible and to you for taking the time to watch. Hit the thumbs up or comment with your experiences or opinions. I'm Lawrence and I'll chat to you later. Auf Wiedersehen, Lawrence. Die sehen aber doch sehr interessant aus. Muss man, muss man sagen. Es ist Wahnsinn, was es mittlerweile alles gibt. Das ist einfach nur gestört. Es gibt mittlerweile so viel Auswahl. Ich habe schon graue Haare. Geben mir auch so Phasen. Geben mir auch so.